Hello there and many thanks for joining us on NTA International News. I am Abdul Malik. Adieu. First, the headlines. Nigerian's First Lady, through our Future Assured program, continues distribution of relief materials to the downtrodden. Taraba State Government mobilizes towards prevention of COVID-19. A correspondent on Stephen Kershaw Stadium preparatory to Super Eagles' next encounter. Now, soccer has come the way of some orphans in Kaduna State as the First Lady Aisha Mohamedou Bahari, through our pet project Future Assured, distributes food items to a number of orphanages in the state. Mohamed Umar Ajingi reports that the wife of Kaduna State Governor Aisha El Rufai handed over the items to homes on behalf of the president's wife. These are orphans at Ali Hassan Children's Home Kaduna. There are more than 130 receiving care from donations they get from individuals and non-governmental organizations. The most recent is coming from the First Lady, Hajia Aisha Muhammad Buhari, whose just hour was delivered by Hajia Umi Garba Rufai. Dr. Aisha Muhammad Buhari uh, sent um, items from the Future Assured um, project that she has. She sent uh, bags of rice and some cooking oil and some blankets that she wanted um, to be distributed in Kaduna State. And uh, she's doing this in other states as well. The donation was extended to Fed Hope Orphanage Ministry at Saban Tisha, Agape Orphanage at Kakao and Umu Ayaman Foundation at Ungwandosa in Kaduna. 15-year-old orphan Beatrice Habila is one of the beneficiaries. They should know that God is with them and can help them. Founders of the homes commended the president's wife for putting smile on the faces of the orphans. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Water everywhere but none to drink is a dictum that best describes lack where there is plenty. In the case of internally displaced persons who are urgently in need of relief materials, there are plenty across the border. But bureaucratic procedure during clearing at seaport is becoming a serious challenge. At a forum in Lagos, stakeholders brainstorm on how to find a balance between security and humanitarian gesture. Michael Olale, report. Are ready made alternative, but a long list of conditions necessary for clearance of vessels and cargoes conveying these items are cumbersome. It was revealed by this forum that, in the course of receiving charitable items from abroad, non government organizations interface with 17 regulatory agencies. We have to come together to make deliberate action to see that we facilitate the uh, transmission of this cargo. Some policies might have to be changed. Some laws might be modified to make things easier. And we definitely appreciate the president creating the uh, humanitarian ministry because we need that. The concern of the forum is that why isn't the clearance procedures? The process must not be circumvented by desperate businessmen. There's a need for us to ensure there's a dedicated contact point for non-profit or charitable shipping so that we know which office to go to. To accelerate the process, the National Assembly is already expressing commitments to having a specific recommendations that could be backed up with robust legislation. We need to look for an interim arrangement to be able to make uh, charitable items better delivered to areas of conflict in the Northeast and in the Northwest. It was jointly agreed that, aside the harmonization of procedures, the flow of financial transactions must be monitored to avoid terrorists from using specific waivers on charitable items to promote the agenda. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Over 19,000 people in Gajiram town, headquarters of Nganzai local government area, in northern Bronu benefited from distribution of food and non-food items by the Bronu state government. Governor Babagana Umara Zulum personally monitored distribution of the commodities, assisted by member representing the area of the federal constituency, Mohamed Tahiru Manganu, and other officials of the state. Government... government State government 
Mohamed Goni reports that the beneficiaries were drawn from the host communities and the internally displaced camps. Each of the 11,300 women received a fabric and 5,000 naira cash support, while 7,800 heads of households were presented with a bulk of rice, maize grid, and cooking oil each. Professor Obagana Omarazilum expressed concern over continued provision of food items to communities and stressed commitment to resisted agriculture in the agrarian communities in the state, creating an enabling environment for local economies to thrive through support for entrepreneurs and small-scale businesses, as well as entrenchment of civil authorities in all areas. The local government secretariat and others should be permanently here in Gajiram, while all those local governments in northern Borno, why they don't have human population. Marte, Kukawa, Gudumbali have to operate in Mongono local government as from next week. And we shall verify them. Any staff who is not willing to be there shall be summarily dismissed. Member representing Mongono Marte Manganze Federal Constituency, Mohamed Tahir Mongono, lauded efforts of the present administration in the state at providing humanitarian support to communities as well as reconstruction and resettlement drive, assuring that the National Assembly will continue to work to ensure a return of peace to the Northeast. Beneficiaries will pull up gratitude to the state government for the continued support and look forward to returning to farmlands and their local economies. <laughs> From Gajiram headquarters of Gaza local government, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And to health matters, though no suspected case of coronavirus has been recorded in Taraba State, the state government is taking nothing for granted to prevent the disease from entering the state. Joseph Otsen reports that equipment are being procured for a special response team and the Jalingo Airport for detection and care of suspected cases. Since the outbreak of coronavirus in China, the federal and state government have been up and doing to ensure it is not widely spread in Nigeria. Taraba State is not left out as the state government has acquired equipment for screening, testing and protective gears for health workers as well as sterilizing items to checkmate outbreak. A quarantine center at the Taraba State Specialist Hospital is put in place for any suspected coronavirus case in the state. The staff in those places we have the PPE, that is the personal protective uh, equipment for the gear. I think I will show you one or two, the goggles, the masks, the boots, hand gloves. Those ones will protect staff, individuals, the nurse, the doctors that will be taking care of those patients. The Jalingo Airport has been operating commercial flight on a daily basis between Abuja and Jalingo to ensure that coronavirus do not find its way through this route. The state government has deployed a medical team with equipment to test temperatures of passengers. This is exactly what is happening behind me here. It's all about uh, protections. So we, we appreciate the effort you are making. If we have a suspected case, using this very infrared thermometer. That means the temperature will be higher than above normal. Then we make sure that we alert the specialist hospital or the medical center, which are the tertiary institution here in the state. Several public awareness campaigns have been on, sensitizing the people on the disease and personal hygiene to prevent infection. In Jalingo, Joseph Sound Oten, NTA News. Join Uche Ugochuku on the latest happenings on the foreign scene. Iran has confirmed almost 6,000 coronavirus infections and 145 deaths as the number of cases worldwide passed 100,000. Officials say a second member of parliament was reportedly among those to have died in Iran, where health officials fear the number of cases may actually be much higher. Europe's worst hit country, Italy, also reported a steep rise in cases. Leading Italian politician Nicola Zingaretti said on Saturday he had tested positive for the virus. I quote, 
I am fine, but I will have to stay home for the next few days, the leader of Italy's center-left Democratic Party said in a Facebook post. The death toll in Italy has risen to 197, with officials reporting 49 deaths in 24 hours. The country has said it will start recruiting retired doctors in an effort to combat the escalating outbreak. And about 70 people have been trapped after a hotel being used as a coronavirus quarantine facility in the Chinese city of Guangzhou collapsed. At least 32 people have been pulled from the rubble of the Xinjia Hotel. It is not clear what caused the collapse. Chinese state media says the hotel was being used as a quarantine facility, monitoring people who had had close contact with coronavirus patients. The hotel reportedly opened in 2018 and had 80 guest rooms. As of Friday, Fujian province had 296 cases of coronavirus. Meanwhile, 10,819 people have been placed under observation because they have been in close contact with someone infected. Uche Ugochukun, NTA News. Many thanks for staying tuned. Now, the Minister of Science and Technology says it has received claims from some Nigerian scientists, including Professor Maurice Iwu, saying that they have findings that can help in combating the COVID-19. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bonaya Onu, revealed this at the Middle Belt Youth Forum Summit, which dwells on science and technology as a means of development. The report while explaining that the findings of the scientists has been forwarded to the Nigerian Academy of Science to be assessed and investigated by a committee, the minister says the ministry is willing to reward any scientist with results on both COVID-19 and Lassa fever. Anybody, any scientist that is able to come up with not just a cure, if you can come with a better way to manage either the Lassa fever or this uh, COVID-19 uh, coronavirus, we will uh, give you this uh, 36 million. On the findings of Professor Iwu, he has solicited a compound and that compound he believes can uh, lead to the cure of uh, this uh, COVID-19. He isolated this compound from a natural product. So by the world convention, if you get anything from natural sources, it is that country that will get the credit. Nigeria must look inward to find a solution to all its problems, Dr. Onu held, as he urged Nigerian youth to pursue innovative means to nation building, as he restated government's commitment to support youths in science and technology. The, our nation is going to be a very great nation. We're already great, but we'll be greater. And our future is bright, but it's us that will make it happen. Nigerian youths must continue to explore means of improving the Nigerian economy and promote nation building, where the words of leaders at the summit. The summit drew youth leaders from the Middle Belt to deliberate on how the region can use science and technology to improve on its economy and that of the nation. In Joss, Ekemarin Kadeng Ladoja, NTA News. You're watching NTA International News. A break beckons when we come back. There will be more news. Do stay tuned. COVID-19 transmission is mostly through droplets from sneezing and saliva. The most effective way to protect yourself from the virus is to practice good personal hygiene. Wash hands with soap under running water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer if water is not available. Maintain at least two meters distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Cover your mouth and nose with your elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Dispose of the used tissue immediately. If you have traveled recently to a country with COVID-19 outbreak in the last 14 days and you have a fever, cough or breathing difficulty, Call NCDC toll-free numbers before going to the hospital. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Your information day important, just like your identity. 
Now the only way we fit take color you. Make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You fit change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why Go TV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel! <laughs> For my phone in that way because now my correct phone number day for boo. <laughs> go TV. Live it. Love it. Now look me again, no. Make you go do your own. NTA International News. Africa as it is. Many thanks for staying tuned to NJ International Live from Abuja, the nation's capital. Now, the All Progressives Congress felicitate with Vice President Yemi Oshimbaja on the occasion of his 63rd birthday and Sunday, March 8. The party, in a statement by the National Publicity Secretary Larry Isao Nilu, salutes the patriotism, doggedness, and untiring effort of Vice President in partnering and assisting President Mohamed Bahari in tackling insecurity, fighting corruption, and resetting the nation's economy on a path of growth and development. The APC particularly notes that Vice President Yemi Oshibaja's massive contribution and the success of the APC-led administration's social investment program, SIP, which is reputed to be Africa's biggest and most ambitious social welfare policy for the most vulnerable in the society. The party also applauds the vice president's headship of the National Economic Council, a development which has ensured a more beneficial synergy between federal and state government in addressing issues that are pertinent to the welfare of Nigerians. The party has expressed confidence that the commendable partnership of President Mohamed Bahari and Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo will take Nigeria to the next level of peace, progress and prosperity. Now, for stories that made the headlines during the week, let's join Joyce Ometo for the details. Hello and welcome to the segment of the news where we look back at stories that made headlines in the last seven days. We begin with Nigeria's border reopening. Now, during the week, the federal government expressed willingness to implement the decision of the tripartite committee set up by Nigeria, Niger, and the Republic of Benin on the partial closure of the nation's land border as soon as the report is received. President Muhammad Buhari made this known at an audience with the outgoing president of the ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development, Bashir Maman Ifo, and his successor, Dr. George Nana Donkor. Also, during the week, the federal government approved the issuance of a sovereign guarantee for a loan facility amounting to 85% of the $2.57 billion engineering procurement and construction contract for the Ajakuta Kaduna Kanu gas pipeline project. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, announced this while briefing newsmen after the Federal Executive Council meeting, which also made other resolutions critical to the nation's economy. And now to the current global scourge, COVID-19. Minister of Health, Dr. Osagi Ehaniri, updated Nigerians during the week on the global pandemic. He said... A total of 21 suspected cases of the novel coronavirus have been identified across four states comprising Lagos, Ogun, Kanu, and the FCT. Out of the suspected cases, two were negative, while one result is still pending, as Nigeria maintains its one confirmed COVID-19 status. Still on COVID-19, Nigeria held an interministerial and multi-sectoral meeting during the week on preparedness and response to the disease. Key players at the meeting resolved to synergize towards optimal action in the country. This followed the evaluation of issues revolving around Nigeria's efforts at protecting citizens from the disease. And President Muhammad Buhari commended Aliko Dangote Foundation for donating 200 million naira to assist in combating the influx of COVID-19 into the country. 
And now let's turn to the judiciary. During the week under review, the Supreme Court in a 6-1 to judgment refused to set aside its judgment that removed Honorable Emeka Ingedioha as governor of Imu State and replaced him with Senator Hope Uzodima. The Supreme Court, in a split judgment, held that it lacked powers to sit on appeal in its own judgment, stating that there is no constitutional provision for the aforementioned. The court, however, held that the parties should bear their costs. Still on the legal front, a federal capital territory high court in Jabi Abuja granted an order of interim injunction which has restrained Adams Oshiomole from functioning as the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress. Ruling on the application brought before the courts by Mustafa Salihu and five others, Justice Danla Dizenchi granted the order on the ground that the plaintiffs have been able to show that Adams Oshomole was suspended by his ward, Esako West Ward 10 in Edo State. Adams Oshomole reacted to the purported suspension from the governing party by his word and described it as null and void and of no effect. Meanwhile, the Abuja court order restraining him from discharging his responsibilities was set aside during the week by a federal high court ruling in Kano. However, hearing on the matter is fixed for 7th and 8th of April. And still staying with the judiciary, a special valedictory court session was held on Thursday to mark the exit of Justice Zainab Adamu Bul Kachua, the retiring president of the Court of Appeal. During the session, she called for a greater attention to be paid across the country to the education and empowerment of the girl child and women generally. Following her retirement, President Muhammadu Buhari during the week approved the appointment of Justice Monica Dongban Mensem as the acting president of the Court of Appeal for an initial period of three months. Justice Monica was sworn in on March 6, 2020. Now away from judicial matters, Dr. Fola Shade Omolara Yemi Essan formally assumed duty as substantive head of the civil service of the Federation. The new head of service was sworn in by President Muhammadu Buhari after the confirmation of her appointment the previous week. And lastly, on culture, the federal government listed Argungu International Fishing Festival on the calendar of Nigerian festivals to be published soon. Information and Culture Minister Lion Mohammed disclosed this at a press conference to herald the 2020 Argungu Fishing Festival in Abuja. And that's it on the segment. Thanks for staying. I am Joyce Umitu. Many thanks, Joyce, for that review of the week. Now, to sport, ahead of Super Eagles next game in Asaba Delta State, sports correspondent Austin Adumedo takes a look at the turf that will host the Super Eagles and the Leon Stars in the match. This was the outlook of the main pitch of the Stephen Keshi Stadium in 2018 when it was officially opened for public use. The stadium first hosted the Spray Goals of Nigeria in November 2018. From then, the senior national team has executed three matches on the pitch so far, while the national under-23 team has tested the turf twice. Two years later, this is what is left of the main pitch of the stadium. The once lost green has now turned grey grass. This is in contrast to what is obtainable in most stadiums across the globe, where the pitch has remained lost green over time. However, the pitch seems to be getting immediate attention as the stadium prepares to host the Sprigos once again against the Lone Stars of Sierra Leone on March 27, 2020 in an African Cup of Nations qualifier. The grassman of the stadium, Lewis Masowa, believes the reservations once shared by the Sprigos technical advisor, Kenneth Roy, over the pitch is being properly addressed ahead of the match. The Pompey ground is, a very, is as simple as anything. If you roll your ball on the pitch, you will see the ball pumping jumping on the floor. But in this place, all the match Super Eagle have played, I have never seen anyone. The only thing gonna run, the, the head coach do tell me, Louis, try and fix the sprinkler. If not, everything is okay. Uh, that is why I want to surprise him with this sprinkler. Because I know if he comes next week or next two weeks, he's going to see the entire thing entirely. It is expected that international best practices should always be adopted in building and maintaining of football pitches to avoid wastages and challenges during competitions. I'm Austin. A demo to NTN News. 
And for more on sports, handball is on the spotlight. And Olumide Kuntala tells us more. Toje Marin won the first gold of the competition in the under 12 boys category with a 18 14 victory at the expense of host Team Sokoto. Toje Marin also defeated Team Sokoto in the final of the under 15 girls event 16 13 to clinch the gold medal. Sokoto State finally got its gold medal in the under 15 boys category with a 18 15 victory over Adamawa. I'm happy to have seen that a number of these boys and girls are from different parts of Nigeria. The 12th Biannual Peace Games has ended in Anambra State with the Nigerian Police Force headquarters emerging the overall best team with a total of 239 medals of 102 gold, 70 silver and 67 bronze medals. Zone 2 clinched the second position with 63 gold, 80 silver and 55 bronze medals. Following the recent fire that gutted the Lobby Stars boss along the Makudinaka road, the Benue State Government has promptly had the boss replaced. Governor Samuel Otom, while presenting a brand new 36 seater box, an additional 10 million naira to players and officials at Upper Aku Stadium, said his government will do all that is necessary to motivate the team. We have been funding and supporting Lobby Stars because football is one area that we can engage, especially our youth. Actions resume in April.